Okay, so welcome to Information Processing. Um, today we're going to look at Schmidt's stage model um, and explain how once we receive a stimulus we make a decision uh, based on previous experience and then produce a response to that stimulus. Okay, so here we have Schmidt's stage model. Um, now this is the only model that we need to know for the exam. It's a basic information processing model and you can see here that it has three stages of decision making. Now the first part of Schmidt's model that we're going to look at is the input um, aspect of our decision making or our information processing. Now our input is sometimes referred to as our display. Okay, and our display is everything we can see and hear in a sporting situation. So that's the ball, the goal, the pitch, the opposition, the crowd, the teammates, any coaching staff, anything we can hear around us. Okay? Now, we then move on to stimulus identification. Now, this is where we are detecting and interpreting the information that's coming in around us. So, detect and interpret is how we would define our perception. So, detect and interpret. And that's what you would have to write in the exam. Okay, so detect and interpret information. Now, detection has three parts to it. And this is the D, which is detection, C, comparison, and R, recognition process. The DCR process, um, which is referred to in the textbook. And the first one we're going to look at is detection. Okay, so the detection process um, goes hand in hand with stimulus identification. So we use three senses to detect information. The first one is vision, and that's an external source of information. So we're looking at stimuli. So in terms of a sporting situation where Cristiano Ronaldo is crossing the ball to us in the box, and we need to get on the end of it, we would um, see the ball flying towards us and we'd have to interpret the speed of the ball, the pace on the ball, the height of the ball, etc. Um, in terms of audition, we may hear people around us um, calling for the ball or claiming that the ball is theirs, so calling their own name. Um, and then the third sense, which is our um, internal source of information, is proprioception. That has three parts to it. Um, the first part is touch, um, which concerns temperature, um, pressure, or pain. The um, second part of that is equilibrium, um, and that is concerned with our balance. And the third part is kinesthesis, which looks at muscle feedback um, in terms of the position of our limbs and the feel of the movement. So in this situation, we've got a lot of stimuli coming in, um, up to 30 items actually, and we take that information in and we then need to filter out the relevant information and the irrelevant. So it may be in that situation that the crowd is irrelevant to our situation. So we then have to use our selective attention to filter out the important info and um, discard the irrelevant information. Okay, so we're going to say that the important information is the ball and the speed of the ball, the height of the ball, etc. So we then um, have that information and we need to compare it to previously um, stored information from past experiences. And this is where we're coming up with a, um, a, an appropriate response to this situation. So we've got our situation, we've got our stimulus, and we need to find a response. So we compare it to information that's stored in our long-term memory. Now in our long-term memory, we, um, we have a lot of information stored as motor programs. So if we've got a successful experience, so in terms of this situation, if we've got a similar experience to the one we're in, we find that information, which is known as recognition. So it's linking we're linking this stimulus with a previously learned one. We found that stimulus, so we recognise that we found this stimulus uh, or this situation. We then use that motor program, uh, we select that motor program, and we've selected a response. Okay, so our response is to um, 
move into a position where we can jump and then head the ball um, into the back of the net. We then have to send that information. Okay, so we've we've covered the two other parts of our perception or our DCR process. So we had detection. I'm just going to run through these again. Detection, which is where we are detecting the information or detecting stimuli using our um, senses. We then have comparison, where we compare the stimulus to previous experiences that are stored in our long-term memory. And then we have recognition, which is where we find a corresponding uh, memory to the situation that we're in. Once we've found that corresponding situation or corresponding motor program, okay, motor program, series of movements stored in the long-term memory, we then need to send that information to our muscles. And this is our response programming. So we're sending uh, the motor program via electrical impulses and the central nervous system to our muscles. Um, once it get, arrives at our muscles, we will then perf perform that movement and hopefully head the ball into the back of the net. Now you'll notice that Schmidt's stage model has not got feedback on it, but the last part of any information processing is that we have intrinsic feedback as we head the ball, and we'll have extrinsic feedback uh, where we see whether the ball uh, enters the back of the net, we'll hear uh, the, child, uh, the, child, the crowd screaming um, or cheering. Um, in terms of our intrinsic feedback, this happens as we head the ball and it comes through kinesthesis. Does that movement feel right? So as we connect with that ball, are we feeling that that movement is the correct one? So to sum up uh, the stage model, we get information that's in our display, um, that's all around us. We then have the process of identifying a stimulus using perception, and we use our senses to identify that stimulus. Um, we then um, filter out any irrelevant stimuli and keep hold of the important stimuli. We then compare those, that stimuli to previous experiences or past experiences in the long-term memory. Um, we try and find a corresponding stimulus um, or corresponding situation to, the, to, that, to the situation that we're in. So we find a corresponding past experience to the situation that we're in. Um, and then we send that motor program that we found in our long-term memory um, to our muscles via the central nervous system and we perform the movement. So hopefully um, we select the right motor program and the movement is successful. Obviously uh, there are a number of factors that will affect our decision making that we'll go through in a later video. Thanks for listening.